I happen to be a student of Albert Einstein and, and quantum physics and mechanics, and it's it's been a, a blessing for me to kind of be diving down into the realm of particles and how they move and how they're attracted to each other and repelled from each other. And so when the idea of digital communication came along, it, it was very easy, at least for me, to understand the general notion of converting voice, video, and data into a single platform of bitstream traffic, whether it's fiber optic or cellular or wireless. And so it just makes sense to me that a bit is a bit is a bit. Whether it ultimately ends up being a TV show or audio or data or voice or an amalgam of all of those things, a bit is a bit. And community television happens to be in this world of sending six megahertz of analog signals across a cable system to a home on a specific channel. Well, that's one mode of transport. And it's a mode that even the cable industry is abandoning, frankly. They're going to digital, they're going to internet, they're going to fusion of internet and digital at the same time. So I think community media as bitstream activists, you know, those of us who are trying to use technology for social improvement, we have to embrace what appears to be uh, on the future, and that is digital integration of voice, video, and data on a common platform of bitstream transport and we just do what we do. I mean, we don't care. The technology is somewhat immaterial. I, I love uh, what I heard from somebody once saying they want our holes, right? They want holes, but they buy drills because the drill is the tool to give you the hole. Well, we have camcorders, but it's not the camcorder we're after. It's the social change or the influence of the programming. And it's not the programming just on television. It's whatever distribution vehicle producer came in and said, look, there's a gang hanging out on my street corner. I think they're dealing drugs. They're not a, a valuable part of my community, and I want to communicate with them. They don't watch your TV channel. They don't listen to your radio station. I sure as hell know they're not on the Internet, but I want to communicate with them. What should I do? And we all thought about it, and actually he came up with the idea of a megaphone. So we went to Radio Shack for 85 bucks, bought a megaphone. We check it out next to camcorders, laptops, projection devices. There's a megaphone, and he would drive by the gang in his neighborhood on the street corner with the window down and yell out, uh, disperse, disperse, and then drive away, you know. Did it work? I don't know exactly if the uh, communication was all that successful, but it's the principle that he needed to communicate. He didn't need the internet. He didn't need community radio, broadcast FM radio. He didn't, you know, need high-speed bandwidth. He needed to communicate with somebody in his neighborhood, and a megaphone was the solution. So the tools are immaterial. And um, I'm not sure as an industry or a movement we've done the best job of perpetuating those fundamental beliefs that this is a social movement and that we are social servants and that the flashy toys and equipment and model numbers are the drills when we're really looking for we need holes. And I'm not sure that that's been passed along that well, you know. Um, so it's, it's, I'm hearing some things about some leadership institutes and we're talking about at the media center to start hosting some community media institutes where we would have people come in for three or four days, you know, fly in, live, live right around the media center and go through a curriculum to talk about the history, the technology, the integration to digital, the values, the mission, and kind of, you know, make it just kind of a a starting point for, for a newer generation of access practitioners or community media practitioners because it's a tough as hell job. you got to stay up on policy, what's going on in your city council or your state or federal government, Supreme Court. you got to be on top of infrastructure, where the cables are, the wires are, where the points of presence are, how you connect to them. you got to be up on hardware and software, both computer, internet, um, cable gear. Then you got to think about creative applications and training models and you know curriculum. Then you've got to be out there working with your board on the basic politics of the operation. Then you got the day-to-day -day, you know disasters of people thinking that you're some kind of uh, psychologist who wants to hear every problem they have and you're going to fix them somehow. And then you got to channel the knowledge. It, it's it's unbelievable learning curve as a field and uh, very few people if any have mastered it in its entirety and I, I realize it's a goal like the mountain I'm seeing over your shoulder that I'm, I'm working my way up that mountain I don't know if I'll make it in time but it's a holistic approach to this you know using 
information technology to promote social change and improvement. That's really the mission. And the tools come and go, and they're going to change, and the infrastructure is going to change, and the policy is going to change, and the people are going to change. But I think if we can drive that home to everybody involved in the industry or the business or the movement, we'll be better off.